Currently in my real job as a math professor at a college, I'm teaching an abstract algebra class. And we just covered the dihedral group and it reminded me how much I like this group and how much of a good illustration it is into the world of group theory. So I thought I'd make a video for the main channel about this group. If you'd like an entire course on abstract algebra, well, that's being built over on the second channel math major. And did you know that that second channel is ad free due to our Patreon support? So that means there's no friction at all for learning over there. No ads to get in the way. If you'd like to help keep it ad free, maybe consider joining the Patreon. Okay, so anyway, let's get to it. So like I said, today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the dihedral group, which is the group of symmetries of a regular n-gon, and the general notation is d sub n. But first, let's consider a square and the symmetries of a square. So here I've got a square right here. And there are two main symmetries that we can start with, and we'll see that we can build the rest of the symmetries out of this. There's R, which is rotation counterclockwise by 90 degrees. And then there's this S, which is a reflection about this yellow dotted line. Now I'd like to very quickly point out that we can get all of the rest of the rotations just by composing R with itself. So R squared or R composed with R will be a rotation by 180 degrees. R cubed will be a rotation by 270 degrees. And R to the fourth power, well that's the same thing as not doing anything. So that's like a rotation by 360 or zero degrees, depending on how you look at it. So that's definitely all of the rotational symmetries of this picture, but it's not all of the reflections. This is only a single axis of reflection, but let's notice we could also reflect it by a horizontal axis, as well as two diagonal axes. So there should be in fact, let's see, four total symmetries which are reflections or reflectional symmetries. So what about these reflections? Can we build them out of these parts right here? And in fact, we can. And we'll see that by doing the following calculation. So let's do S composed with R and see what it is. But in order to see what it is, we need to put a square inside of this operation and see what it ends up doing to the square. Okay, so let's give this some na names to the vertices. So let's say that's A, B, C, and D. So since these are acting like functions, we're composing from the inside to the outside. So operating by R will rotate first 90 degrees counterclockwise. So that means we'll have S acting on, well, it's still a square, but now the vertices have moved. We have A, B, C, D, like that. And now let's reflect about the vertical axis. Remember, that's what S is telling us to do right here. And what will that give us? Well, it's a square again, but now we have D, A, and then C, B. So something like that. But now we'd like to put that in terms of reflection about a certain axis over here. Well, let's compare the input with the output. Let's notice that A and C are fixed, whereas D and B have been swapped. So this is in fact like reflection about this diagonal axis. So let's put this diagonal axis in here like this. Okay, so this green axis is exactly the reflectional axis given by S composed with R. Now let's move on and do another one. Let's maybe do S composed with R squared. So plugging our starting square into this will give us the following. So we've got S composed with, now let's put our 180 degree rotation first. That'll give me A, B, C, D like this. And then we'll reflect about our vertical axis. So let's see, that's gonna give me a square with vertices labeled C, D, B, A. Okay, well now let's try to find an axis of symmetry for that. And let's notice that it's exactly reflecting about this horizontal axis. So now let's put this horizontal axis in here. 
So notice not everything's matching up. That's because my picture isn't perfect, but that's okay. So this is SR squared. So SR squared is the reflection about this axis right here. And then maybe I'll leave this as a little bit of a homework exercise. That reflection about this remaining diagonal axis is SR cubed. And that fills in all of our reflections. The vertical reflection is S. This first diagonal reflection is SR. This horizontal reflection is SR squared. And then this final diagonal reflection is SR cubed. Okay, so keeping that in mind, we can really think about this symmetry group of the square being generated by R and S. But the real question now is, what's the commutativity relations between R and S? Do they commute? Well, let's do a nice visual representation to decide what those commutativity relations are. I've got this nice map which is going to help us figure out the commutativity of R with S. So let's notice we've got eight squares here, and these eight squares represent all of the eight different symmetries that we can do to this square, or eight different rigid motions that leave the square unchanged, other than the name of the vertices, of course. Remember, we've got four rotations and four reflections, but it's generated by R and S, so we can describe everything in terms of R and S. So let's say R is this blue arrow, so moving from one square to the other, we'll have this arrow which is blue, and then S is this magenta. So I've started with my starter square here, and now let's apply R. So if we apply R, that is rotation 90 degrees counterclockwise, That'll put the A here, and then we'll have B, C, D. So like I said, rotation counterclockwise. And then let's apply R again, and what will that do? That'll move my A here, and then we'll have B, C, D. Then we'll apply R again, and that'll move my A here, and then we'll have B, C, D. And notice if we apply R one more time, we end up back where we started. So the fact that we end up back where we started after applying R four times really gives us motivation that R to the fourth power is equal to the identity. And let's recall that the identity inside of a group is generally denoted by E. So let's collect some of the rules for our group over here. Okay, nice. So that shouldn't really be a surprise though. Now let's apply some reflections. So let's apply our vertical reflection to get up here. So our vertical reflection is about this sort of axis. So that'll give me A, D being swapped. And then let's see, we'll have B, C being swapped. But notice if we apply the reflection back, we just get back to where we started. Now let's apply a reflection here and here as well and see what we get. So again, it's a vertical reflection, so A and B are swapped in this case. And then C and D are also swapped. Then let's apply a vertical reflection here, and then notice that if we follow it with itself, we get back to where we started. So this is going to give us C, B, and then D, A, and then doing the same thing over here will give us a D here, a C here, an A here, and a B here. So in each of these cases, we saw that applying the reflection two times got back to the identity, and that is encoded by S squared is equal to E. But remember, our goal was to get the commutativity of R and S. And in fact, we need to include something about this outer ring of rotations to see what goes on there. So what's the relation between this square and this square? Well, notice if we apply our counterclockwise rotation to this square, we end up with this square over here. So that means our R arrow goes in that direction. Then if we apply our counterclockwise rotation to this square, we end up with this bottom right square. So there's our counterclockwise rotation. Likewise, we've got a counterclockwise rotation between these two, and finally a counterclockwise rotation between these two. So that really gives us a full map of what's happening with D4. 
So you don't really want to think about any of these pictures as elements of D4. This is really just kind of the action of D4 on this square. And you can start with any of these starter squares and really apply all of the elements of D4 over and over and over again to get to any of them we want. Okay, but now what we'd like to calculate is what is R times S? So it's a composition of a rotation and a reflection, so it should be a reflection. But we know all of the reflections are of this form. They're either S, SR, SR squared, or SR cubed, so it should be one of those. So how are we gonna figure this out? Well, I think a nice way of doing it is maybe picking one of these squares as a starting point, and then going through with S first and then R because it's a function, so you apply from the right, and then finding another path between the starting and the ending point. Okay, so let's see. If we, like I said, start here and we'll apply S first, so that will be applying this first, and then apply R second, we end up over here. Okay, so let's put this in green as well. But now let's find another path between these two squares. But I think I immediately see another path between these two squares. It's applying R, 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 and then finally S. But applying R three times first and then S is encoded by SR cubed. So that gives us this relation, RS equals SR cubed. And in fact, this is all the data we need to describe this symmetry group of the square. So in other words, we have D4 is equal to the group generated by R and S, where now what do we have? We have S squared is equal to R to the fourth is the identity. And then we also have this relation right here, which I don't have room for. So once again, if you'd like to learn more about group theory and abstract algebra in general, check out that full course that's being built on the second channel. And if you can help us keep that ad free, consider joining the Patreon. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.